are there any blockages in a person that avoids them to getting in connected with their higher self? Okay, well, there's, there's one that I haven't talked about, and I was hesitant to talk about it for a long time because I didn't want to have, to have people even more fearful or worry about something else. And that is that there are numerous non-physical entities that were affecting people's ability to tap into their higher self. These non-physical entities will in, infest a person and whatever little trauma, whatever little problem they have, they'll turn it into something bigger. Sometimes alcoholics talk about hearing these demonic things, go ahead, drink another, get another drink, even though they know they're way past their limit. Or encourage people that are trying to be on a diet, don't worry, don't worry, eat this sugary dessert, you know, no one will notice. And it's almost like they have a, like the devil on their one shoulder and the angel on the other. Well, these devils on their shoulder are real. They're non-physical entities. And in the normal course of my clearing, I would, at one stage, take out these entities from them. And beginning in May of last year, I, I decided, hey, if I take this out, and those entities will never come back again. But I wanted to make sure that they didn't get new ones coming in. So I said, okay, I'm going to not only take the entities out of this person, I'm going to find out who put them there, what other entity put them there, and I'm going to get rid of them too. And I remember the first time I did this was May of last year. I went there, I said, okay, and I used my intention to find, okay, who are the bosses of these entities? And there they were. And they're looking at me, and I remember seeing them with my inner vision that, like, fearful, like, you can see us? I said, yes, I can see you very clearly, and you're going to have to go. And so I would scoop them up, put them in that portal where they don't come out again. <clears throat> and so what started happening around the world, actually, some of my immediate protégés, but other people picked up on this, is they started clearing the astral realm of these non-physical entities. And so by the end of the summer, less than 10, well, it's down to now less than 1% of them are still around. So the entities that people have usually have been there for a long time. Once we take them out, there's no reinforcements for them to go to get reinfected. But having these non-physical entities uh, removed has been one of the reasons why all this, uh, these hidden stuff, is especially the really bad things, the satanic rituals and the pedophilia are being exposed now because these negative beings are no longer able to help cloak or shield this from coming out. So it's being exposed. So. And you are able to, you have the ability to see those negative entities in a physical form? Yeah, the, I mostly feel things, but when I can, I can see rudimentary some things, and if it's something very important, sometimes I see it. But these are the reptilian looking entities that look like little dragons. Well, they, they, look, they look little to me by the time I, I blow myself up, <clears throat> and that's what I'm getting rid of. Those are the bosses of the entities that are infecting humans. Uh, was it overwhelming for you when you first started to first began to see them uh, in a physical form? Uh, well, they they were physical. They weren't physical form. There's not very many left. But dragons, the myth of dragons is not a myth. They were real. They're underground. There's other aspects of that civilization, the hierarchy, the militaristic cast of that group looks like the the Jem'Hadar warriors from Star Trek like a reptilian head, big, strong. They're the warriors of that. <clears throat> so when I was young, just starting out on this path, on the astral realms, where I, my natural level of consciousness, I would encounter them all the time, and I would have fights with them. And, and then sometimes I'd wake up in the morning and have bruises, because what happens in the astral, especially the lower astral, will carry over to the physical. So I'd wake up. Now, subsequently, I got much higher in my energy now, so now there's no, no more fighting. It's, it's a, I'm in a position. On the astral realm, it's, it's a consensual reality, just like your dreams. If you're awake in your dream, the other people that you're interacting with, it's a consensual reality, and the person who can go to the higher level dictates what happens in that dream. So if one person's trying to grab me and flip me or throw me against the wall, if I'm at a higher level, he can't do that, but if I'm higher than him, I can do that. I can pick him up, or I can grow, or shrink, or do whatever I want. Grab him, throw him against the wall, just like in the Matrix. That's, that's what the astral realm is like. And so that's another reason why you want to increase your energy and connect with your higher self. That's what boosts you out of this, this lower astral realms into where you're, no, you're not affected by them. They have to worry about you. Those negative entities, service to self entities, are no longer able to influence.